Good afternoon, everyone. Christina Thomas, thank you very much. Um, first thing I'm going to do is apologise for holding my notes, but um, my seven-year-old daughter went back to school recently, so anybody who has a child will know that means every germ and illness available comes through the front door of your house. So I haven't really given it the... I introduced myself, Tim Hipperson. My name is Tim Hipperson. I am the head of special projects at UtilityWise. Head of special projects basically means I do everything that nobody else wants to do. But it's a good thing. It gives me sort of a very good general overview of our business. And um, the guys from German Trade and Investment asked me to just come here today and talk to you about the help that they gave us in our market entry into Germany. So before I do that, a little bit of background on who we are. This is our head office in Newcastle. We're based in Newcastle. Um, we are an energy consultancy, formed in 2006, as it says, with four guys in a small little office. Essentially, we were swapping energy contracts for non-domestic customers only. We'd go to the market, we'd find them the cheapest in gas electricity there was for them. Um, we grew that to a point where in 2012, we were able to float on the UK stock market. Um, now we have, as it says here, about 1,500 staff. We have offices in Newcastle, Redditch, Barrie, all over the UK and in Prague as well. Um, we look after approximately 70,000 supply meters. That's around about 30,000 customers. We're adding 1,000 a month at the moment. Um, as it's there, it's there again, national energy services capability, and we are now operating in not just the UK, but Republic of Ireland, Germany, France, Belgium, and the Netherlands. After the acquisition, after, sorry, after the acquisition, after the flotation, after the IPO, we accelerated our growth through a number of acquisitions, and they're on the board there. I won't go into too much detail. In clouds are an engineering company. There are feet on the ground, environmental services group. Aqua Veritas are a water consultancy, so we're now closing the loop of utilities, electric, gas, and water. EIC allowed us to have access to the corporate market. Utilities-wise, historically, is an SME energy broker. By purchasing EIC, we were able to access the corporate market by having a commodities trading team, so we're now able to buy gas electricity flexibly on the wholesale market. Icon, this is our European call centre hub based in Prague. I'll come and talk about a bit more about those in a moment. And very recently, we acquired a company called TMAC Technologies, TMAC RA, uh, energy uh, controls and monitoring company. So with all those businesses, we were able to produce what, this is our, what we call our utility management plan. So now the acquisition or the, or, the, or the supply contract is one part of a much greater service set. We are a full end-to-end -end energy consultancy from helping the customer buy their energy better, through reporting on it, monitoring it, controlling it, reducing it, on-site renewables, energy efficiency projects, compliance with UK, European law, and accreditation. So we thought we had a pretty good handle on this energy consultancy business. You know, we had a, a, a good IPO, a good flotation, a good service set. We were innovating in the market. So we had to think, what next? What were we going to do next? And the answer came to us from one of the energy supply companies that we work with in the UK. We were quite successful for them in the UK, and they asked us, can we begin to sell their products in France, the Netherlands, Belgium, and Germany? I'm going to focus this talk on Germany more specifically. So that's what we did. Now, this isn't a particularly exciting slide, but I will talk you through these timelines as we go. So in September 2013 we began to sell into Germany. We had seven German nationals working in Newcastle selling directly into Germany. Um, we were selling as the energy supply company, not as utility-wise, and that's key because our business is built around an independent, impartial model, going to the market, getting the best price for the company. We were selling into Germany as an energy supply company, which is unusual for us, but it gave us time to learn. We began to see that the market was actually very interesting indeed. We were, uh, we were converting about 5% of the companies we profiled into contracts. Not a huge amount, but enough to show that there was a market out there. In April 2014, we acquired Icon. Icon are a European um, call center. Very experienced in multilingual sales, very experienced in pan-European sales, excellent service level and quality. So quickly, we had quite a large, experienced sales force selling into Germany. In June 2014, we did something really important to us. We flipped that German business into our utility-wise independent model. We got, went out there. We got relationships with more suppliers. We started to see it and build a customer journey that allowed us to sell as utility-wise. But we were still only converting 
We had a problem. We knew there was a market there because our call to quote ratio was about 200% higher than it was in the UK, but we were still only converting 5%. Now, that means we had a problem. We didn't know what it was. The truth is, we were naive. We thought we'd just pick up our UK operation and drop it into Germany. We thought we knew it all, but we didn't. And we needed help. We didn't know the intricacies. We didn't know the subtleties of that market. So, in January, a team from the UK operation, myself included, uh, were asked to look at the European operation and consolidate it. Where are we? What can we learn? Let's restructure that business plan and get it to a point where we know what we're doing. So, that's when I first made a call to German trade industry and Helling Ellerman in particular, who was in incredibly uh, intelligent, very, very useful. Uh, I met with him in Essen at the E-World conference on the 11th of February, and from there we started to learn about the market. I have to go to my notes now, excuse me. Um, we were essentially starting afresh. We had to start from afresh. We knew there was big potential. We knew, we just didn't understand why we weren't converting it. We didn't know the answers to those questions. Henning began, Henning began to fill in those gaps. So, I'm going to now talk about what sort of things they did and how they helped us. So, in, in, as it says in here, in March, we created a German GmbH and a registered German office. Everything that Henning was telling us was that there was a trust issue between the German and call centres, which is what we were, essentially. We needed to show the German businesses that we were dedicated to working in Germany. So we set up a German company. They're not stupid. They're very clever. They're very market aware. They're very IT literate. They kept Googling us, checking us out, and everything led back to half a dozen guys in Prague and in Newcastle. This wasn't what the market needed. So we set the German GmbH up. We set the company up. Throughout March and April, we began to increase relationships with suppliers. In the UK, there are 26 energy suppliers. It's very easy to get relationships with them all. In Germany, there are over 1,000. We had to learn very quickly which ones we need to make relationships with, what geographies they are in, and Henning and his team were absolutely key in helping us do that. They taught us about legislation. They taught us about the different difficulties that commercial sectors had. They taught us about tariff analysis, and we began to build our customer journey around what we were learning from German trade and investment. For example, around about 30% of the utility bills in Germany are wrong. Their tariffs are calculated incorrectly. They're being overcharged. The first point of our customer journey now is to check the tariff history of a customer. Just last week, we saved one customer nearly 20,000 euros by recovering costs. Now, that would never have happened without the help of what the guys at German Trade Industry did. In April, well, we had this great big German office now, we had this great big customers, uh, customer journey, we knew exactly what we were doing. But as Henning said to us, the problem is, Tim, nobody knows who you are. Nobody knows who Utility Wise is. So we, got, we employed a dedicated German marketing manager, and we began to do all sorts of exciting marketing materials uh, and get out there, to, get out there into, the German, into the German business space, social media, business to business press, trade events, all of which Henning and the team, again, helped, held our hand through it all. In May, we um, trained the staff. We got all the sales staff in. We trained them all on all the pain points of the customer. What are the pain points? How are we going to fix them? We're very adept at doing that in the UK. How are we going to do it in Germany? We trained them on the, on, on the purpose of why we got the German office and the German address and the German telephone number. We trained them on all of the marketing collateral. And the results were quite impressive. I've got them written down here, so again, excuse me for referring to my notes. But we measure the success, what well, I look for personally, the success of my team on three KPIs, three key performance indicators. The first one is the average sale value per meter we sell, per energy consultant. In May, that rose 17%. The average number of contracted meters that each person was selling, that rose 41% in May. We looked at the average revenue per energy consultant. That rose in May, after we introduced the sales journey, 64%. By the time July had come round, we'd proved this new sales journey worked. The average value per meter had risen to 76%. The average num number of contracted meters had risen 67%. And more importantly, the average revenue being generated per sales consultant had risen 195%. This is due to the sales journey, knowing the pain points of the customer and understanding how to fix them. German trade industry was absolutely key in delivering that. August we secured our piece of, first piece of non-procurement. 
business. So we now are undertaking uh, ESOS assessments, which is a U U EU legislation for a German company who's representing three of the world's luxury brands. Uh, we've won another hotel piece of ESOS work and we're continuing to do so. But the ma headline figure here is we just closed September off. We're now 150% ahead of business plan. And that isn't fortune or luck. We made mistakes, but we went out and we had to learn how to fix those mistakes. And with the help of these guys here in Henning, we did that. Uh, they were the key to unlock uh, the success we're now having in Europe. So thanks so much to them, and thanks, Jan, for the event, and thank you, everyone, for listening. <laughs> thank you very much, Tim. Cheers, I think Jan. you did a great job in, in giving us an idea on how these people can help people like... You. Very much, yeah. yeah As I super. said, we, we thought we had all the answers and we didn't. The good news is, everybody, we have a long coffee break and I think we are five minutes ahead of time, which is almost unbelievable. <laughs> so enjoy it, swap business cards, drink coffee and everything else you need. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Thanks, mate.